Ramsey's had their annual Christmas party with neighbors, friends, a Santa, the kids from school. Beautiful party. Somebody knocks at the door and they say, who's knocking at the door? And uh, one of the relatives, Patsy's um, sister from Atlanta, opens up the door and this guy's mumbling, confused, uh, stressed. And he's mumbling and she says, I don't understand what he's saying. So Patsy's dad went to the door and they, he explained he lives across the street and he's real concerned because the dogs are barking. And they're saying, what are you talking about? So then John goes to the door and realizes uh, this guy's connected to the, the Barn Hills, which is across Barn, the street. Back in, okay. That's my okay. 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 Back he's, okay, he's connected to a neighbor across the street and said that uh, the people that across the street was at the Christmas party and John Ramsey invites them in. This gentleman stays in the house for about an hour, kind of work walks around the house, doesn't talk to anybody, and our profile predicts that's when one of dozens of notepads that were all over the place, family notepads, was removed from the house. And that may have been the purpose of why this guy came uninvited to a Christmas party that knew nobody and didn't associate with anybody, didn't eat the food and refreshments. He collected the notepad that was written across the street, most likely based on the woody wording on Christmas Day, with a water base Sharpie marker ink that was out of production for several years with a brand new tip. Then the intruders, when they come back Christmas night, to take the investigation away from them, they take that water base out of production Sharpie marker and drop it in an orange can underneath the kitchen phone where other markers and pens and pencils are used by the family. And then when the investigation looked at the ransom note, which is really an instruction note, they knew it was a black type marker. So those markers in that can became top of interest, top items of interest. When the Secret Service did the testing, and that's who did the testing on the inks, they found out that that pin by itself matched the ransom note. And so it put, and in the papers, the ransom note was written around the 25th page in the middle of the ransom note when it was ripped out by a right-handed person, that's forensic science. It left some paper so we could identify the three pages to a notepad that they brought back that night which, when the Ramseys were at Which the possibly Christopher. allowed the police to think that the Ramseys were responsible because it was a notepad from inside the house. And so they took that as the only option that the Ramseys was an inside job. Um, I'll tell you about John Douglas. Now, Roscoe, John Douglas, a famous profiler, uh, the subject of Criminal Minds, the uh, hit show. Talk about his involvement in this case because he did some work on the John Bonet Ramsey case, and you've had conversations with John Douglas, the famous FBI profiler. Well, he told us that this, under the FBI headings, that this is a personal cause homicide for money. Personal cause homicide. It turned into a homicide. Why? Because in the ransom note, it said several times, do not contact the police, the FBI. They did a whole list, a stray dog. If they do, John Bonet's body will not be found and she dies. And that's the words which was connected to the movies that were out there back then. Those phrases, she dies, so it was similar to a lot of movies, uh, this ransom note writing. When, now I lost my thought. <laughs> Hit that dish for a second. This way, not wasting tape. John Douglas also at the beginning of the investigation did. Whoops, okay. John Douglas at the beginning of the investigation also said it wasn't a sex crime, which it turned out not to be. Uh, the, the original forensic testing used UV lights, and the saliva was found between her legs, and they jumped the gun and said it was uh, sperm, and that a, a, a male figure, maybe a father of the Ramsey uh, family, may have been involved. And it turned out Doug, John Douglas said, no, it's, it's not that. Watch, when you get the test back, you're jumping the gun. The test came back, it was saliva. It wasn't sperm. This wasn't a sex crime. And John Douglas said it was a crime of, what was that again? Personal cause homicide. And that Personal cause homicide. Money. Maybe money problems could have caused it. We'll be back with a number. Uh, maybe it was... You know where I'm going with this. And John Douglas said it was a money crime.
Correct, DeRosco? Personal cause homicide. Personal cause homicide. We'll be back with another uh, Team JBI. John Douglas said it was a personal cause homicide for money. John Douglas said it was what kind of homicide, Roscoe? A personal cause homicide for money. Money. Meaning... It wasn't a sex crime. It wasn't a crime that went bad. Money. It money was. problems. We'll be back. We're going to take a commercial break. And uh, after these commercials, we'll be back with another Team JBI member, uh, Derek... Rummer. We'll be back with another... We're going to take a little commercial break for some commercial messages. We'll be back with another Team JBI member, Derek Brumrick, to talk about those motives for the persons of interest. I'm Mike Kilbreth. You're watching the Michigan Crusaders. Okay. Now let's get back ahead to... Um, can you pause in a minute? Sure. We'll take, you're taking a break? Or about five minutes. Derek, in the previous segment, Roscoe Clark made reference to a Bible uh, passage, 118. And the 118,000 ransom notes, there are some other tie-ins to this 118,000 figure. Talk about the significance of 118,000, which, by the way, I'll mention was well publicized that uh, John Ramsey had received a $118,000 bonus from his company. But 118,000 is a significant figure and two other items that you came across in the document lab that we've talked about. Speak to the significance of some of these 118,000 references. Yeah, every, every, a lot of people you talk to on this case, a lot of the things that, the, one thing that comes up often, sorry, let me start over. <clears throat> Gosh, I, sorry. A lot of time, I don't know what to say. Hold on. Where did 118,000 Oh, yeah. From? A lot of people you talk to on this case, one thing that is repeated often is they had, whoever wrote the note had to know John's bonus amount. Uh, so they had to know that. But our investigation shows that John's bonus amount had nothing to do with the ransom amount. Uh, one of the persons of interest, I found a VA home loan in in the in a recorder's office. This loan was taken out by him at a time when he was going through major financial judgments in uh, in a in another state. He used the VA loan to start fresh, uh, moved to another state, bring his wife out there, and got him out of a lot of trouble. And that's why that's why we believe his lucky number is 118. So, uh, excellent. They go to the grands, the, 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 go to the son after the, the DA cleared, so no one could be, he got a, a loan. Yeah. So we found the source, <clears throat> so we found the source of the $118,000, excuse me, so he found the source of the $118,000 ransom amount. It's got nothing to do with John's bonus. That's just totally coincidental. It was from a VA home loan that the organizer took out when he was having major financial problems in another state. He gets this loan. It's a VA home loan because he served in the Army. Moves to Boulder, Colorado to start fresh. And so he considers $118,000 as a number that gets him out of trouble. At the time of the Ramsey murder, he's in trouble again. So he goes back to his lucky number. Another person of interest in this case, uh, about two, three years after the murder, when the district attorney, Alex Hunter, came out and announced that there would be no charges filed in this case. They don't have evidence to charge anyone. And the headline said stumped. Another person of interest connected to the organizer took out a $118,000 loan, almost as a celebration loan, to say, yeah, 
they're, they're, we're not going to get charged. We're in the clear. Uh, almost, almost like a, a like a like a joke. Like, hey, this hundred eighteen thousand dollars, this hundred eighteen hundred eighteen thousand, it really is a lucky number. And so, so yeah, that's the, we have two sources. We, we found two hundred eighteen thousand dollar loans. One before the crime, and one after the crime as a celebration. Perfect. All right, ready, guys, go. Let's finish this. Okay, hold on. You gotta wait like a couple seconds, or? That's good. It's going. Let's go. So, Roscoe, the. Back up. Where was that? We were talking about the, the Bible. Um, Case is full of misinformation, <laughs> and I think that's because, keep it unsolved. So, Roscoe, this whole case. So, Roscoe, this whole case, it seems like it was filled with misinformation. Why is the question? Well, the question is, why do they not want it solved? But it totally is full of misinformation. There's at least 50 forensic items we've tested that are clearly putting the, putting the investigation on a different path. And it has to be deliberate. Nobody could be that ignorant uh, to have those results. And the more we look into it, the more we find it. It's deliberate. Roscoe, let's go back to John Douglas. You've had conversations with John Douglas. What was his opinion of this whole situation and why Boulder didn't want it solved? Did, did he have an opinion? He did, and he actually testified in the grand jury. He did a test where they said a child could not have screamed in that house, and most people in America think if they heard a child scream loud as a neighbor could hear, that the Ramses would have heard it, and so since they said he didn't hurt it, they're discrediting the Ramseys. Well, he went into the basement of this four-level house. Basement? 6,800 square feet. Four levels. In the basement or up where she screamed, they actually had a guy scream down there. And they went on the second floor where the Burks and Javanese bedroom was. In the third floor, which is the fourth level above the basement, a remodeled attic, remodeled quite nicely, you cannot hear a child scream at, at, at the top of their lungs. But because where she was in the basement, it was near a utility room that had a six inch makeup air duct in the front window that would allow the sound to amplify like a speaker and be heard across the street by the neighbor that had her window cracked. So a neighbor heard John Bonet scream, the family couldn't hear it, and that made the family look bad because the average person in a 12, 2,000 square foot house, single ranch, would, couldn't understand that detail. Else. Click for a second. Yeah, click for a second. What's up, man? All right, we've talked about the getaway driver who, your person of interest, is a Michigan man, a Michigan connection. Who are the other players in this scenario? Well, at this point, there are several people that know inside information, but our top persons of interest, it started with the organizer. He's the one that had over $70,000 in judgments just before Christmas. This individual tracking his history, going way back when he was a track runner in high school up to, to when he died, shows that he's an organizer. He knows how to get other people in need to do what he wants. So we had the Michigan connection, which we call the transport person that was going to do the money exchange up at the top of the hill down the street in a perfect location to do that. Even the ransom note suggested, you know, be rested, John, because it's going to be, you know, exhausting. Uh, and it would be, we had our team members go out there and do the trail up to there, and it's very exhausting. The second and third people are called intruders. And the intruders had a connection to a neighbor, which all everybody involved in this crime had major financial difficulties, but were all closely connected. And so those two were in the house with John Bonet. It would take two intruders to perform what was what happened to John Bonet in that house. There could be a third. A neighbor seen multi-people in the house with headlamps on, flashlights, going through the kitchen after midnight. Thought it was very odd because that's the first time he seen people with headlights, flashlights going through the house because he had a perfect view of that and just thought that was odd. And the, 